Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Friday, July 28th, 2017, and I want to talk about five ways you can characterize a battery. So you can talk about a battery's performance in terms of how much energy it can store per unit mass, so watt hours per kilogram. You could also measure this in BTUs per pound, but that would be a terrible thing to do. How do you measure the watt hours and how do you measure the kilograms? Well, you just weigh it for the kilograms, but how do you measure those watt hours? That's the key question. To do that, you need a discharge curve. You need to integrate the current and the voltage over time. And we can make a reasonable approximation of that integral as follows. So most people don't have the electronics to do a constant current discharge. They're going to do a constant resistance discharge. That means the voltage and current are changing, and you have to monitor both of those. So let's monitor voltage and current during the discharge. When you want to calculate the energy, you need power, or watts, by calculating voltage times current. Take the average number of watts over that little slot of time, multiply it by that slot of time, and you get the amount of energy in that little bit of time. Sum up all those little bits of energy, and you can approximate the total energy of the discharge. Point two, life cycle to 80%. Generally, batteries are put through cycle after cycle until they hit 80% of that original total capacity, and at that point, that's considered to be the lifespan of the battery. Now, of course, you could cycle it more times after that, but that, that was just an arbitrary line in the sand. The battery's dead after it, it's lost 20% of its capacity. That, that's probably conservative for lots of uses. Point three, Coulombic efficiency. This one's a little more subtle. If I take, say, one amp for 60 seconds, I have moved 60 coulombs through the battery. And if I then discharge the battery and get 60 coulombs back out, I have 100% coulombic efficiency. But inevitably, when you're pushing those 60 coulombs into the battery, you're also just moving current through the battery. There's some of the electrons that don't drive the reaction you want. They drive other reactions or they just generate heat. So inevitably, if you put 60 coulombs in, you get 50 coulombs out or some smaller number. That fraction, 50 over 60, is the coulombic efficiency. Point three is the open cell potential. It's the easiest to measure with a multimeter. If you do not allow any current to pass out of your battery and you measure the voltage, that is your open cell potential, and it is misleading to think that that is a good characterization of your whole battery. It's a first approximation of the performance of your battery, but there are always other effects, particularly point five, the internal resistance. So as you start to discharge that battery, you'll notice that during discharge, the voltage drops. And if you stop discharging, the voltage seems to rise back up to the full open cell potential. That difference in voltage is caused by the fact that the battery can't reorganize its chemistry infinitely quickly. And that lag of chemical reorganization inside the battery is called the internal resistance. And inevitably, it slows down the, the reaction, and it causes you to get fewer volts than you would if, if you discharged infinitely slowly. Knowing that internal resistance helps also measure how much, how much performance you're going to get out of the cell. So there you go, five things you can do to characterize a battery. Uh, the most important, I argue, is that watt hours per kilogram. And on Monday, we will talk about how to use these five points to characterize the bag cell that I've been charging and discharging all day today. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we update Monday through Friday, so come back on Monday and we'll talk about the performance of the all-iron battery that we built here in the Allen Lab.